Hey everyone, it's Matt from Akuma Mods back again uh, testing out some new resin. So I've only done a couple prints with this stuff, um, but uh, just wanted to show it off and see how ridiculous this resin actually is. So this is by the company called 3D Resin Solutions, and this is their new Fast Plus resin that's going to be coming out on the market. Um, they were kind enough to send me a bottle, uh, Craig, uh, from 3D Resin Solutions, was, uh, wanted to send me a bottle to test out and see how it was. So I figured, you know what, what, what can we print that would be something ridiculous, something that people wouldn't think that resin printers can print with. So I went down the list and just something automatically popped into my head. And it came out to be an, extru an extrusion rail. Jeez, can't talk. Uh, an extrusion rail for a printer or whatever you want it for. Uh, this one happened to be a 2020 extrusion rail. So um, I threw this onto my Kumitsu, uh, Sane Smart Kumitsu KL9 um, with the suggested settings. Um, as you can see, there's there's some issues with it. Um, that probably needs to be dialed in a little bit more because um, this uh, bottle is more based on resin settings for the Creality LDR. Um, so that's, um, that's what I just based it off of if I didn't do a calibration test or anything like that to make sure that everything is, uh, that is okay with the, the system. So I just, I went off and I hit print. Um, I kind of figured that there was gonna be some issues because that's got a far higher wattage LED light than any of my other printers. It's 80 watts. Um, so it, it can get quite insane. So obviously you see there are some issues with this, uh, this resin print. Uh, but for the most part, it came out exactly as I needed it to. So. Uh, what I mainly wanted this printed for was a durability test. And uh, I've already been kind of playing around with it. And again, even though it's not structurally great looking uh, on some areas, uh, I can almost guarantee that this is probably the most heaviest duty resin that I have used to date. Um, I've used Soraya Tech Fast, I've used Soraya Tech Tenacious, Soraya Tech Sculpt, Monocure um, Tough, Monocure um, uh, Clear Tough, all kinds of different stuff. And uh, I've even used Frozen's uh, stuff. I've used engineering resins. And this stuff so far has got to be the most insane properties that I have worked with uh, for resin. Um, and I say that because, well, I can't break it, no matter how hard I try. I can't break it. Okay, this is resin. Like, that's insane. No resin should do that. And it, this is at 0. .5. Yes, it is solid, but, I mean, it's not that solid of a print. There is a hole right through that. So, and the thing is, is like, I'm tapping on the little tiny sides. Here's the other thing, okay? So as I was uh, discussing with the uh, uh, with Craig from 3D Resin Solutions uh, about the the properties that this resin has, mostly for its tensile strength, uh, if that's the right way you say that, I'm pretty sure. Um, one of the things that he was boasting was that it was it was up there. It was crazy. I forget the number off the top of my head, but it was. It was insane. Uh, and then he came back like not even a couple hours later and he's like, I tested it even with a different uh, setup and I can get even more on it. Um, and then he started going into if I were to cure this with high temperature settings. Now, I do have a cure box that has a heated chamber in it. And he said, if you were to put this in a heated cure box chamber, uh, the properties would become even more stronger. Now, I will tell you, I did not do that. 
I just decided, yeah, you know what? We're gonna throw this in the Anycubic wash and cure station. So we washed it off with some denatured alcohol, and then I put it on cure for two rotations at six minutes. So that's 12 minutes of cure time. That's more than enough. I would think, if anything, I was overexposing this. And with it already having some flaws in the print, and you can see that there's flaws all on every single side. And there are some dripping here, and that's just because the supports didn't attach to it. Again, it's a resin settings uh, for the exposure that wasn't right. Um, but I, I went off the, the bottle's recommendation. Obviously, that's not 100% uh, right. Again, this is still in the testing phase, so that six seconds that's listed on there might change to be six to eight or five to seven, who knows. Uh, again, still kind of testing some things and I have another print going on right now. But you can see we are ugh, we are way, way over. Uh, but there's a reason for that because that, that print failed the last time because I didn't put enough resin in it. And since I'm gonna do this video and, and head to bed, I figured, hey, might as well uh, throw up uh, some some resin in there as much as I can. So, uh, so yeah, whatever. Uh, but yeah, this is the most insane resin I have used to date. Oh, we had some cracking. I heard it. And again, it's cracking. It's cracking along a side that there was an issue on the print. But for the most part, I can't crack this thing in half. That is insane. Like, I'm damaging. <laughs> now granted, this is just an Ikea table, but still, that is that is crazy stuff. Like, look at Nothing. So, if this happens to come out into the wild, um, I highly suggest getting a bottle of this if you're worried about anything breaking. Um, I do have a mini figure of a Nemesis statue, which I think I'm going to try and reprint before I do a video on that one. But uh, yeah, so far it was pretty good. Uh, I accidentally didn't support some areas, so the base of it kind of dripped a little bit. But um yeah, this, this stuff is insane. So we have 60, 60 seconds for the bottom exposure and 6 seconds for normal, which I've actually adjusted on the, uh, the Creality to be at, uh, I believe it's 40. Okay, so we have it at 6 seconds for the exposure time and 40 seconds for the bottom exposure. And this is at 0.5. So uh, again, I know this is a solid print, but still... Even a solid print, even with these little overhangs and everything like that, you should be able to break it in some way, shape, or form. And it's not breaking at all. So, if you guys are looking for an insanely awesome, like, ridiculously over-engineered uh, resin that uh, can take a beating and keep going, especially for you people that are minifigures, uh... I highly suggest this resin right now. Again, I will come back around with a minifigure uh, video to test out and see how durable it actually is with, you know, like some staffing and things like that. Um, but if it comes out just as good as this, this is going to be the best resin for your, your, uh, your bang for your buck. Um, I know these are a little bit more pricey than, you know, your typical Chinese resin. But there's a reason for that. And this, this right there, shows it. So if you guys are very interested in 3D uh, resin and you're worried about it being too brittle, go ahead and check out 3D Resin Solutions. And specifically, once, we, once they start coming out with the uh, 3D Resin uh, Fast, 3D RS Fast Plus, um, definitely start looking into that because that's going to be a huge game changer. So uh, I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Uh, share this out to your friends, family, whoever's into resin printing and wants to get into resin printing, whatever it may be. 
And uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, until next time, guys, happy printing.